In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create and edit both types of text in CorelDRAW, artistic and paragraph. I'll also show how to fit text to curves and shapes. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, there are two types of text that I can create with the text tool, artistic and paragraph. Artistic text is simple. I activate the text tool, click once where I want to start the text, change the font or size from the default if I want, and start typing. I can include line breaks by pressing enter. Clicking in blank space completes the text. I can select the text and perform some standard edits, such as resizing or stretching in one direction, and if I click again, I can rotate the text. I can use these arrows to shear and skew the text. I can set the character fill by clicking a color swatch. And if the text docker is open, I can do even more. Under character, I can switch to a vector fill and choose the pattern, or try a texture fill, or a fountain fill. For any of these fill options, clicking the fill settings icon lets me modify the fill properties. When I double click a text object, I can edit the text itself. Another way to edit text is to activate the text tool and click once in the text. When I drag to highlight some of the characters, I can use the property bar or text docker to change just those characters. When text is selected, I can also change the kerning, which is the spacing between characters. Paragraph text is great for larger amounts of text, which is placed inside a text frame. I can type out my paragraph text if I don't have too much to say, but usually it's easier to have the text available in another application, where I can use Control C to copy it first. Back in CorelDRAW, I'll activate text, and again, I can change the paragraph font now or change it after the text is added. I'll click and drag to set the text frame that will contain the text and press Control V to paste it in. While paragraph text is selected, I can move it or use the handles to adjust the frame size. I can change text properties for the entire frame, such as font or size or color. Or I can double click to edit the text and make changes just to selected characters. If the text frame turns red, this indicates that the frame is too small, so I'll select the text again and expand the frame until it returns to blue. I can also fill the frame with a background color. With both kinds of text, I'm not limited to straight lines or rectangular frames. Let's start with artistic text. I'll use the Bezier tool to trace the mountain ridges. Then I'll select the text and choose Text, Fit Text to Path. Now I can place my cursor along the curve and click to fit. I can still make any changes I want to the text itself. Or say I have a curve but no text yet. When I activate text and move the cursor over the curve so that its cursor icon changes to a curve symbol, this means the text will automatically fit the curve. When this text is selected, I can move it by dragging a white square, or I can scale it. The red glyph can be used to move the text anchor point. I also don't have to use a rectangular frame for paragraph text. Any closed shape can be used. I'll place an ellipse here and use the properties docker to give it a wider outline and a transparent fill. In this ellipse, I want to place some text that's in a Word document, which already has some formatting. I need to close the document before it can be used for importing. I'll go back to the text tool, and when I move my cursor to the ellipse, I can get two cursor icons. If I click when I see the curve, I'd be placing text along the outline of the ellipse, as we saw before. But as long as a closed shape is identified, then when I move a bit inward, the icon changes to a frame. This means that paragraph text will fill the shape. I'll click here, then rather than typing or pasting, I'll choose File, Import. Because I'm importing while in the text tool, CorelDRAW filters the search to show only file formats that support text, and not image formats. I'll find the file with the text, choose to keep the fonts and formatting, and bring it in. The shape isn't quite right for this text, so I'll convert the ellipse to a curve, then use the Shape tool to change its shape. The text updates accordingly. With the Pick tool, I'll double-click in the frame to edit the text itself. I can make changes directly, 
Or if I open the Edit Text window, I can change the text while it's presented as easy to read paragraphs. There are many more features of paragraph text to cover, which will be done in a later tutorial in this series. Finally, if I'm using OpenType fonts, I can take advantage of CorelDRAW's interactive OpenType feature. If I select a character for which there are OpenType alternatives, I'll see a small triangle below the character. Clicking on this displays some of the stylistic sets that I can use instead. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating and editing text in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.